play this song for the opening song, so we're trying to help you get the melody. the opening song, so we're trying to get the melody in your head. I don't know if I can spit that out in time. Yeah. song that you're going to sing along to, I, I've been putting it in the, the prelude music, because sometimes the, the melody kind of goes into your brain a little bit, you know, without you even knowing it. <laughs> uh, here's Reverend Sandy. The subconscious teaching. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Oh, goodness. Well, g good morning, everyone. It's so wonderful to see all of you who are here at Unity of Michiana, some faces I haven't seen for a while. It's good to see you and, and Sue Ann, and uh, it's just wonderful to have those of you who are here present, and welcome to those of you who are joining us via our live stream service. We are a heart-centered, multi-generational, and a diverse spiritual community dedicated to teaching and practicing a positive life approach in our spiritual journey. And our vision is a world united in loving acceptance, celebrating inclusivity, harmony, prosperity, and awakened consciousness. And it is so, so wonderful in, in the new technology of this day and age to be able to embrace all of you who are here present and those of you who are present via our live stream. So thanks for joining across the miles. I want to do a special shout out to my cousin Frank and his wife Kathy in Nevada and my second cousin who, uh, who got married yesterday. Um, and, and so it, Charlie and his new wife, Misha. Yeah, so a shout out to you and, and to those of you who are watching across the miles. Thank you for joining us. Here in unity in that understanding of the higher consciousness, which we call the Christ consciousness or that, that element of elevated awareness of the oneness of all unity in, in and through the consciousness of the world, we like to start by lighting our Christ candle, and it invites us into that place of that inner oneness and that acknowledgement of the, the living Christ presence, and we'll follow that with meditation. And so in an opening prayer, in this now moment, We just breathe and relax. Oh, as we just let go, as we just allow ourselves to be present here and to acknowledge each other, to feel the energy in the room, and to also feel the energy and connection to those who are viewing via live stream and across the country. And it allows us to recognize the oneness of all being. That we are a part of a greater flow of expression. That which we would call the Holy Spirit or divine pure being. Mother, Father, God. Divine, feminine, sacred, masculine. We breathe into this time that allows us to Set aside the busyness of our everyday lives in order to be fully present, in order to receive, to be infilled, to recognize the gifts of the Spirit. And so as we continue to breathe, we feel that connection 
to one and all as we participate in the dance of unique expression, of individuality, of allowing each to be who we are. And so we say thank you, beloved Mother, Father, God, for the flow of your spirit right here and right now as our hearts and our minds and our spirits are awakened to your presence. In and through your name we pray. Amen. And now I'll invite our youth to come forward. So we'll have you come over here so everybody can see your beautiful faces. And we know that we like to rub our hands together because it reminds us of that flow of life. And sometimes we kind of forget, don't we? And you feel that energy. You can feel the warmth in the palm of your hands. And as we do so, we just beam that forward to our children who are here, those joining us via live stream and around the world. And we say, we hold you in infinite light. And we bless you with our hearts filled with love. Thanks, you guys. Go and have a great time. So now I'll turn it over to our wonderful musicians for today, John and Kevin. Take it away. Oh, 
the things I judge you done by people just like me. So till the birth of peace on earth that only love can bring, I'll help you grow by loving everything. Just the way I am Thank you. I was enjoying that so much, I forgot I was supposed to uh, get up and, and introduce. Um, uh, in, in Unity, we have a daily uh, publication called The Daily Word. It's a, an inspirational message uh, for each day of the year, and Barbara Milan, Dr. Barbara Milan, will be reading that for us for today. Thank you, Reverend Sandy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The word for today is freedom. Taking responsibility for my life leads me to freedom. Each life has its share of ups and downs. Like most people, I felt blessed by my happy experiences and laid low by my most difficult ones. I have used the spiritual tools of forgiveness and gratitude to learn from and move beyond my more painful experiences. This kind of spiritual housekeeping is my key to lasting freedom. By releasing blame and regret over and over again if necessary, I am ensuring that I will not be bound by the past and limited by an outworn image of myself. Life is dynamic and so am I. My growth is dependent upon my forward movement, and I commit to embracing the freedom that comes from leaving the past behind. With gratitude, I bless the person I was. With faith, I reach unencumbered for the person I am becoming. And scripture tells us in Galatians 5 and 13, for you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Thanks, Barbara. Oh, and just allowing these beautiful words to resonate within us. Let us take time now for uh, meditation, a prayer, a time of just mindfulness, of setting aside the busyness of our world and just breathing into right here and right now. So as I sound our singing bowl, which resonates at that energetic vibration of the heart chakra of love, I invite you to gently close your eyes or relax however works best for you and feel the energetic vibration that opens our heart and our soul to this now moment. And so as we continue to breathe, it's a, a simple action, and yet we often forget how powerful the breath of life is and the action of breathing in, which opens our minds, our neural pathways. And then breathing out, exhaling and releasing tension negativity, old energy, that which is used and completed and finished and ready to be let go. 
so we breathe in and we breathe out. And as we do so, we find ourselves moving into a place in the center of our being, in the core of our solar plexus or our energetic inner sanctuary, wherein resides the truth of our being, that pure, whole design made in the image and likeness of God, yet unique and unlike any other. And so as we breathe into that, as we breathe into who we are, it allows us to embrace all of our anomalies, all of the things that we do, our skills, our creativity, our expression. And as we breathe into that, we also recognize the things of the past that we hang on to. And as our daily word talked about freedom, it reminds us that those things of the past that continue to run our lives, we can choose right here and right now to release and to let go simply by shifting the focus of our attention. By engaging in an acknowledgement and a willingness. A willingness to be open to that which is higher self, to that which is cleansing to that which is present and here and now and full of every opportunity and every good grace and every healing, that which is absolute, unconditional love. Not an emotion, but a state of being. And so we breathe in and we breathe out. And we know that this is a divine gift in our design given as part of the ever ongoing grace of replenishment, of renewal, the breath of life, the breath of being. And so we rest in this moment fully aware and embraced in light and grace, knowing that in this moment, we are all that we can be, and it is all good. Knowing that in each new moment, we recreate and become what is to be forward. And in so doing, like the caterpillar that sheds the cocoon, we birth like a butterfly to fly free. So we allow ourselves in this moment to gently drift in that light and healing awareness of infinite love. We breathe, we relax, we let go, and we receive in a moment of silence.
And so having been infilled in this moment of replenishment and renewal, with open hearts and open minds, we breathe forth that prayerful energy of grace and good. And we surround our prayer box in light in the requests that have been placed within it. And we take this moment to each speak aloud the name of loved ones, of friends, of neighbors, of world situations that we would especially bless at this time. Frank, Kathy, Charlie, Misha, Vicki, Evan. Isabel, Mary, Catherine, Melanie, Sharon, Lori, Jill, Jessica, Brianna, Teresa, Emil, Suzanne, Unity of Michiana, Unity Worldwide Ministries and World Headquarters, our world leaders, our first responders, Ukraine, Russia, And so we know through the powerful energy of the prayerful intention spoken forth through the breath of prayer that these people and situations are surrounded in that which is of highest good. We pray it forward in and through the consciousness and the grace of infinite living spirit, Mother, Father, God. Amen. The presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this Okay, so um, as, as is typical, we're going to do one of mine here. Um, so when, uh, when John said uh, today was about, uh, the today's topic was about embracing self, I think it took all, me all, what, of two seconds to say we're, we're doing this song? <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah. Because that, that's what this song is. It's about, it's about being your authentic self uh, no matter what life throws at you, and it throws a lot at you. Um, it takes a, a lot of will and bravery to do so, but it's also uh, part of what makes life worth living and opens you up, opening yourself up to yourself opens you up to a lot of uh, other wonderful things in life. So this is called Bloom for a Day. This soil it presses down this soil it presses down it's 
held me so long But it's making me strong This soil Well, it presses down These stones They block my path These stones, they block my path Well, they're hard to dislodge So easy to dodge These stones, they block my path But I will rise from this smothering earth I did at my birth I have my peace have my say yes I will find a way to belong if just for a day These leaves, they cover me. And oh, 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 these leaves, they cover me. Well, they may have me pent, but they scatter where the wind. Dead leaves, they may bury me. This smothering earth And I'll cry out Like I did at my birth Have my peace Have my say Cause I will find a way To belong If just for a day And this shade, it hides the sun. Mm, this shade, it hides the sun. But I shine my own light in the darkest of night. It may hide the sun and still I will rise from this smothering earth and I'll cry out like I did at my birth. I will have my peace, have my sing, cause I will find a way to belong. If just for a day mm -mm 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 -mm. We will have our peace Have our sin And we will find a way On a blow just for a day. Thank you. Oh, gosh, by golly day. If we had rafters, they would have been shook, I think. <laughs> Thank you so very much for the light that you share in the music that you write and how you express both of you uh, it's a wonderful gift that we receive from you appreciate that 
Oh, yeah, we have one of those really um, easy subjects to talk about today. Forgiveness. Oh, gosh. Forgiveness. So my talk title shifts a little bit. It's called Everyday Forgiveness, and it's about embracing self. And there's actually a two-part talk. I will be talking next week about everyday forgiveness of others, releasing and letting go. So as we stop for a minute to breathe into, what does forgiveness mean to each one of us? And it depends on what we've been taught through our childhood, through our cultural societies, and also in our inner belief systems that oftentimes are running us unconsciously. And we tend to look at the bigger picture of forgiveness, do we not? And look at the transgressions that others have inflicted upon us or that we have inflicted on others. And yet what I think we forget about is every day forgiveness of just the little things and of beginning that process and knowing that true forgiveness starts within each of us. It starts with ourselves. And, and so as, as we look at an idea of forgiveness, we recognize that it is the avenue through which we heal ourselves, through which we open ourselves to that which is new. It is how we then come together to be with each other. Uh, Joshua Loth Lehman, he was an American reform rabbi. He's a best-selling author and an international speaker. He said, we achieve inner health only through forgiveness. The forgiveness not only of others, but also of ourselves. And I think we often forget to start right here first. In Scripture, in the Bible, from Colossians 3, 8 through 9, it says, oh, actually, I'm only using 8. But now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, and slander. Such a simple line. And yet it's that reminder to us to put away from us these repetitive thoughts and things that go through our minds that we continue to run and invites us individually to put them all away. And it goes on in Matthew 6, 12, as many of us, many of you know from the Lord's Prayer or what came to be known as the Lord's Prayer, Verse 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And it says, first and foremost, forgive us our debts. Forgive those places in us where we have not released and let go and where we still judge ourselves, do we not? And so everyday forgiveness has to do with a process of recognizing the little aspects of forgiveness. Because we tend to see the big pictures, right? But we sometimes miss all the little ways in which forgiveness will free us. Now, so I want you to think for just a minute, what are the ways in which, on a daily basis, you judge yourself or criticize yourself. And do you think at all about needing to have forgiveness or to forgive yourself for that? And I'm going to invite you to go ahead and those of you who are online and um, those of you here in the room to, to think for just a moment, even since you woke up this morning, how many things did you criticize yourself for? And is there anything, you, you put a number down, which mine, if, you know, if I was honest, probably was about at least 35 to 80, I don't know. You know, just those little running thoughts, right, where we judge, where we think we're not enough, 
where we run over and over in our minds things we've heard from childhood. What about the shoulds and the have tos? So go ahead, you know, think about it. Go ahead and speak them out loud. My sister always says, she watches from California. Um, she's in Nevada at the wedding this, this weekend. But, you know, she always says, you ask us to post something, and I'm just sitting there thinking about something to post, and then you go on to something else. So those of you at home, if you care to do that, um, appreciate that and continue to as, as we move forward. But can any of you think of something you've already criticized yourself for today? Go ahead and speak it out loud. Being late. Being late. Oh, man, I'm never... <laughs> right, 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 everybody knows me. Okay, being late. Yeah, go ahead. Wrinkles. Wrinkles. Oh, my gosh. You know, how many of us women put, you know, some stuff on to not have those show as much? Um, oh, my hair didn't come out right today. What about the things, too, and keep on, just shout them right out. What about things, sometimes we think we've said to someone, like, oh, my gosh. Or something we think we've done. Yeah, Susan's going to tell us some. Um, this is for your first question from okay. Linda Hardy. I think more of ways to change instead of forgiving myself. More ways to change? Yeah, more of ways to change yeah. instead of forgiving. Forgiving, thank you. Um, and 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 so we um, we off. Oh, sorry, I was focused on Susan there for a second, so I lost my train of thought. Um, we do tend to forget or 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 to judge what we have said. We think, oh, that person really hated that, or I was really mean, or oh, I wish I hadn't said that, or gosh, I just blurted it out. Have any of you blurted anything out this morning? Yeah. Or yesterday, or it's likely to happen shortly. Yeah. And we don't even know if the other person heard it in the way, A, we thought we were meaning it, B, it really was, or C, it really doesn't even matter. But see, we run these tapes constantly. And, and it's interesting. Who, uh, Susan, who was it that said that comment? I was curious. Did... Linda Hart. Oh, Linda. Oh, bless her heart. Yeah, because she's kind of going along the track of, of where I'm going with this, Linda. Bless your heart. I love it. It's like, so my next question to you is to be aware of how much time, consciously or unconsciously, do you spend running on criticizing yourself, judging yourself, blaming yourself, running a scenario where you said something that embarrassed you or that you were harsh, you feel, how much time do we spend doing that? And how much time do we spend breathing in to the current moment and opening our hearts to work on forgiveness and release. See Joy Bell C. She um, is on Instagram, and she has a lot of uh, wonderful followers. She is a contemporary philosopher and a, and a poet. She says, I have learned that the person I have to ask for forgiveness from the most is myself. You must love yourself. You have to forgive yourself every day. Whenever you remember a shortcoming, a flaw, you have to tell yourself, that's just fine. You have to forgive yourself so much until you don't even see those things anymore because that's what love is like. She's talking about, you know, being aware of. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Susan, go ahead. I wanted to share what Teresa yeah. Anderson posted. I yeah. had to let go of self-criticism. It was fueling my profound depression. And then... Um, Okay, Mary. wait, 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 because and then you can say another one too. But it was fueling my profound depression. Her self criticism. Can any of you relate to that? Yeah, boy, that criticism just eats at us, doesn't it? Go ahead, and the next one. Mary Lou Siebold. She was responding to your how much time, and she said about twenty five percent. 25% towards forgiveness or 25% of running all the old have-tos and shoulds? We don't know, huh? 
because I wasn't clear in my question. <laughs> That's okay. Mary Lou, bless your heart, whichever way it is, and forever for each one of us, just be aware of, of some of those figures and noticing how much time do I consciously or unconsciously criticize myself, and how much then does that spill off and over onto others? Because then I'm irritated. Be, oh, man, I'll just be beating myself up, and then I'm irritated, and then I get in line at the grocery store, right, and someone in the 10 items or only has 12 in front of me. I'm like, oh, right? And we do count, don't we count? <laughs> don't we count, I know. You notice I said 12, it must have happened, because that's, yeah, exactly what you do. And, and see, it just perpetuates itself, because all of those criticisms and all those judgments and all the have-tos from childhood, from from adulthood, from, you know, everyone else sort of pointing the finger to, it, it just is perpetual. And, and then we don't stop and take the time to be aware, to release, and to forgive. Um, Ayanda Magagula um, is an artist and a video producer internationally said, I love this, I love this quote. She says, you can't undo, unsay, unsand, unlove, unkiss, unhurt, unfeed anything. All you can do is accept the past, enjoy the present, and learn for the future. Learn for the future. So how important is it for us to remember that, friends, that all of those have-tos and shoulds and all the stuff that we run on ourselves are there and we can't undo them, but they're no longer present in the reality of right here and right now. So if we're going to be shifting and if we're going to be moving into a place of everyday forgiveness, it's about awareness. Leo Carver, um, who I took this quote from uh, www.chopra.com, he is a certified Ayurvedic uh, lifestyle practitioner for the Chopra Center, and he says, seek thoughts that align with love for you. In other words, that's what I was talking about earlier. How much time do we spend consciously or unconsciously running all the criticisms and judgments versus seeking thoughts that align with love? If your thoughts lead to self-pity and other lower vibrations, chances are you will continue to give yourself more material to hate. Anywhere been there and done that? Yikes, yeah. Because it sort of, you know, spirals and, and like a snowball rolling down the hill, and it just gathers momentum. This is because this form of judgment is not rooted in self-love. Yeah, definitely. Be kinder to yourself. Forgive your wrongs with a heart that wants to manifest more right. With a heart that chooses to manifest. A judge's job is to restore balance, to reset harmony. As your own judge, learn to do so with compassion and a mindset for evolution. When self-judgment arises, shift mental gears. Step out of the conversation you're having with yourself. Don't engage the negative thought. Just passively acknowledge it. Passively acknowledge it. Because when it pops up, man, because it's run so many times in those neural network pathways in our minds, what do we do? You know, it's, it's like that thing where the dogs go, squirrel, pff, we go there, right? Oh, there's something up in the tree. When those anxiety negative thoughts come in, we go right to them because that's what we're familiar with. Yeah, Susan. So a couple minutes ago, Mary Lou Siebold was mentioning running old films. Yeah. And then Teresa Anderson was saying you can't control other people's behavior. It, 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 that is so. It's like that's what we're, t thank you, both of you. That's what we're talking about. It starts, you know, forgiveness starts here. And we tend to think, oh, we're supposed to, you know, these old concepts of, oh, you know, I won't acknowledge my hurt, I won't acknowledge, I'll just forgive. And it's a misunderstanding of what forgiveness is about. 
Forgiveness is about releasing and letting go those thoughts that keep running us and keeping us in that space of anxiety. From Proverbs 12.25, it says, Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. When was the last time you gave yourself a kind word? And from Luke 6.37, it says, Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Well, when we take this into a context of ourselves, we're not speaking of anything out there. When we look to the wisdom, the ancient wisdom, in the words of the Bible or any other of the ancient wisdom writings, and we get judge not, it means don't run that on yourself. Don't be putting yourself down. It doesn't mean to ignore, because the process is to acknowledge. But, but if we don't acknowledge, it keeps running in the background, and then we keep being focused on that. Judge not, and, and you will not be judged. If we're no longer judging ourselves, we are not judged, and we're not condemned. And as we forgive, as we open our hearts and, and embrace ourselves, we are forgiven. Forgiveness takes everyday practice, embracing ourselves and healing with love. It takes everyday practice, friends. And, and we don't always think about it because we think oh, forgiveness is only when something major happens. So I'm going to just in, invite you into a practice this next week of recognizing when you get off track, when all of a sudden your mind is taken up with anger, hurt, resentment, fear, guilt, shame, have to, not living up to. Notice it. Acknowledge it. Don't try and pretend it doesn't exist because it will just perpetuate that way. Acknowledge it. Allow it to come to the surface. So whether you speak it aloud, whether you write it out in a journal, whether you have a trusted confidant that you can talk to about or share with, that is one of the first steps. And, and then make amends. Make amends to self for all the ways we beat ourselves up. Make amends or for any transgression to recognize that, it, that we do at times things that afterwards we would maybe have chosen to do different. And so from a new light, we can make amends for that, but then we release that. We do not hang on to it and continue to carry it. From Scripture, Mark eleven twenty five, 25, it says, And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, and most specifically yourself, Forgive him. Forgive yourself. Notice that prayer is the opening and that opportunity of breathing into embracing self. And from Proverbs 10, 12, it said, says, Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. Hatred stirs up strife. That's when we judge ourselves. Do we not have a little bit of self-hate going on? And when we don't love ourselves, how difficult is it for us to love anyone else? So this is a time to practice everyday forgiveness. Take time apart. Once you have acknowledged the, the thoughts that are running, the judgments, the self-criticalness, all of that, once you have done that, then begin to breathe into prayer. Begin to release unto God. Open your heart to allow that, that, that loving presence to take precedence, to lead you forward, to shift your focus from that which has been the negative, critical, judgmental self or action into present and what is now, and how you will center and move forward.
Beverly Engel, uh, she's a psychiatrist. Uh, she's an expert in abuse recovery. She's an author of many books. And she says, turn down the volume of your negative inner voice and create a nurturing inner voice to take its place. When you make a mistake, forgive yourself, learn from it, and move on instead of obsessing about it. Does anybody do that when they make a mistake? Oh my gosh, I will 20 years later go back to a certain circumstance, and it's still running in my mind. I go, oh my gosh, how could I have done that? Do any of you do that? Everybody should be nodding. I know everybody does. We do. And it may not even be from 20 years ago. It may have been from five minutes ago or, or whenever. But, you know, move on instead of continuing to race on that track. She says, equally important, don't allow anyone else to dwell on your mistakes or shortcomings or to expect perfection from you. How often do we listen to someone else and allow their judgment to affect us? versus standing clear in who we are and breathing into that presence of God in us that opens us to the love that heals and forgives. Most of you know um, Dr. Gerald Jampolsky. He's internationally recognized author and a psychologist, and he says, forgiveness means letting go of the past, friends. So this is an invitation to everyday forgiveness. Notice just the little things. Don't make it too trivial for it to, to count. Include it in your prayer time when you stand praying. And, and recognize it and then release it into the energy of healing presence of God and of love. And so in closing, I will share a quote from Kemi Sogungal Lay, international speaker, professional coach, and award-winning author. She says, without forgiveness and love, you will live with resentment, bitterness, malice, and strife, which result in more pain. You can never love without forgiving. Forgiveness deepens your ability to love and frees you from pain. I think that's um, an avenue that we all want to move forward in. Everyday forgiveness in just those little moments let us embrace ourselves and allow love to, to shine through us and to heal. And so that concludes uh, my talk for this Sunday. But we have a, a special acknowledgement um, of someone very dear in our congregation who, um, who the whole church most of the time rests on her shoulders, Susan Zook. Would you be willing to come forward for just a moment? And I don't ever tell Susan we're going to acknowledge her because then she might scoot out the door. Come on in, sweetie. I know. Susan is one of those people who is, is, is underlying all of us, who is that rock upon which we stand, and she quietly goes about doing what she does which with such grace and such skill and has been such a major support to me throughout the years I have been here and also to all of the boards along the way. And the board recently chose to acknowledge Susan and I will turn it over to Sue Ellen as vice president. I know that Tamara Ashley, who is our board president, is watching via live stream. Sue Ellen is our vice president. <laughs> well, some of you know that MASH is prominent in my consciousness. And when the board asked me to represent uh, our gift and Reverend Sandy's gift, a MASH episode came to mind. And it was when Father Mulcahy was provoked to socking a patient in the jaw. I see. It was justified because that patient had socked Margaret. But nevertheless, Father Mulcahy, he felt terrible about it. Now, Susan is not up here because she socked anybody in the jaw, but the, the quote that struck me is at the end of the show in MASH, when Hawkeye was, because Hawkeye kept saying to Father Mulcahy, forgive yourself, these things happen. And at the end of the show, Hawkeye toasts Father Mulcahy, 
and he describes him as someone who's too modest, too utterly simple a man to know how much strength he gives us just by the decency of his life among us. Now, I've been here for over 30 years, and I've seen Susan under lots and lots of conditions. Never have I seen her lift an eyebrow when I call and ask something dumb. I'm all, she, she always listens with grace. She responds with kindness. And she just supports this whole community in the strength of her decency, her everydayness. I've been thinking about spiritual integrity lately, and I think, Susan, you certainly are the example of spiritual integrity. So please know that the board and Reverend Sandy notices, even in your quiet and self not putting forth way, you're noticed a lot, loved a lot, and appreciated a whole bunch. Thank so you, Susan. And we are grateful from the bottom of our hearts. Yes. Okay, well, and so uh, I will um, just share t two quick announcements. Um, our Wednesday Zoom group, we, we get together and uh, have a discussion um, through a Zoom call it from 6 to about 7, 7.15. Uh, there's some music and meditation during that time. And Susan, do you, and see, I'm going to ask her because I told her and now I can't even remember. What, what was the theme that was coming up? Do you remember? Oh, ha, ha, ha. yeah, I wonder how come that came up. <laughs> yeah, so um, sometimes I'll take something out of a meditation book and we'll discuss those ideas. So this week is being self-critical, and, and then the following week will be on the subject of an abundant consciousness and, and that. So plan to, to come in. Susan sends out that Zoom link uh, every Wednesday morning, and if, if you are not receiving it, would like to be a part of that discussion, uh, please... Uh, Call the office and, and be sure your email is included in that. And, and then the second announcement is uh, Susan and Kevin are taking um, a, a, a vacation. It's, uh, she, they're going to be out of the office this coming week. And so we will bless them on their journey and, and hold them in uh, light to be with family and to have a, a wonderful time. Um, I will, of course, still be here. And you can, because my hours are so varied, uh, feel free just to call me on my cell phone, which uh, you have. Or if you call into the office, uh, it, it, my cell phone number is on there. So um, if you need to reach someone, uh, please be in touch with me. And so that concludes um, our happenings and events. And so I'd like to invite you now into this wonderful time of receiving your contributions, your love offering, your gifts that support Unity of Michiana in, in its work in, in moving out into the world and being a part of this global spiritual movement. You can go to unitymichiana.org uh, on our website and donate there or on our phone app, Unity of Michiana. And so let us all in our consciousness just hold our gift and affirm together our prosperity statement. Thank you, God, for this... Oops, there we go. Thanks, Terry. Thank you, God, for this abundance that I share. Through the divine law of circulation, my gift blesses all, and I am prosperously blessed in return. And so we affirm and acknowledge that flow of that infinite spirit that is a source of all abundance in life and relationships and expression of which we are a part. And as we participate and give, it creates that space for us to receive. And in that, we are grateful. Thank you, God. Amen. And now, if you will, join uh, together with me in singing our peace song, and we will conclude with our prayer for protection.
the sun and the wind and the rain bring everything we need Father sky above Mother earth beneath peace on earth peace on earth peace on earth peace on earth we are sisters brothers all all the world around we lift our voices high in one joyous sound peace on And before we conclude with our prayer for protection, I want to thank Terry Peters, who has uh, been uh, mentored by Susan to do our PowerPoint for next week uh, while they're gone. And and thank you also, Kevin, for working with Tim uh, to work uh, with the camera so that we will still be able to have PowerPoint and live stream next Sunday. So we'll look forward to seeing you all there. So let's join now in our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And so it is, and so we let it be. My blessings to all of you. Ah, Let's let that forgiveness of love move through our hearts every day. Thank you. Take care.